Hey, um, I met Sarah and a couple of years ago I was inspired uh, by an Annika Victoria video where she wore only clothes that she'd made for a week um, and she recently redid this and uh, I commented on there that I'd made a lot of clothes in lockdown and perhaps I should have a go at doing that challenge myself and she commented back, DO IT! So uh, this week <laughs> I am going to be doing it as encouraged. So I've got all of my clothes out into not like a super neat clothing rack like she has, I've just hung it over this dressing screen in the spare room. And yeah, I'll show you around the wardrobe and let you know what the rules are that I'm going to be following. And I will give you little updates uh, every day for what I'm wearing for a week. So this is the uh, wardrobe. I've sort of organised it a little bit. So we've got uh, underwear and socks kind of in this spot. I've got kind of masks and things up top uh, because for like Covid times. And then I've got kind of accessories like hats and scarves and things here. I've got a single bag and then I've organised it kind of like tops, bottoms. Oh, it's gone really dark. <laughs> Bottoms are sort of in this bit, so like skirts, trousers, that sort of thing. Um, Jacketsy, jumpersy, outerwear sort of stuff over this bit. And then like anything that's full body is along here and down here. Yeah, my rules are that I'm going to not repeat any items. Um, I have given myself some leeway. So with socks and underwear, I'm going to try my best. I haven't made any bras, I've made some sports bras, so I'll be wearing those. Um, but I only have about four days of socks and pants, and obviously a week has more than four days in it. So um, I'll switch from uh, regular, from <laughs> homemade pants to sort of regular pants. Uh, I am also allowing myself a few items of additional clothing. Uh, so a regular bra, because although I have the sports bras, um, I think that uh, some of the tops just wouldn't work with a sports bra, and I wouldn't want to not be able to wear that because I didn't have a bra to go with it. Uh, the same with a pair of plain black leggings and tights so that I can take advantage of the skirts that I've got, some of which are quite short, and also a camisole top, just in case the top's like a little bit too uh, short or anything, because I am filming this in England in the winter, unlike Annika who's been filming like in spring in Australia. <laughs> so those are my rules. No repeats, and I'll come back with my first outfit in a minute. So this is day one's outfit on my body. Uh, this is the kind of hanging out at home portion of it. So not super duper warm and cozy, but also like fine for being inside. Uh, I think the corset looks nice uh, round this way. I think it's a little bit easier to uh, hide some of the imperfections I've got on the other side, which is a bit of a shame because I designed this to be the inside. But uh, yeah, um, I'm, I've worn this corset all day before, so I'm not expecting to have any uh, particular issues around movement or breathing or anything. It's comfortable and it was made to measure, so uh, because I made it <laughs> for me. <laughs> so it should be fairly comfortable. Uh, this is the dress, which I think is a little bit of a, and probably the best dress that I've made. Uh, it's completely shapeless without the corset on, um, but it has pockets um, and it's just, it kind of goes all the way down to the floor. Um, I'm the camera see that. Yeah, it goes, it goes well, all the way down to my ankles. And those are the socks that I've made. So I am in 100% uh, me made clothes. Let's see if I can cheekily show you this is underwear. I think that's probably safe enough to <laughs> get past uh, people's sensibilities and nudity check. This is a uh, pretty good snapshot of what my life looks like at the moment in lockdown. Um, I'm still on the course that it's now uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon and feeling fine and not bothered by it. Um, got some doggo hanging out in this situation. Um, yeah, I didn't talk about the uh, one of the better features of this uh, of this dress is that Azafrail actually sits completely inside the sleeves. So um, if I if I want to put her in there. I can like hold her, hide her whole body. And she, she wasn't even that worried about it when I did it the first time. I just thought, did it as a joke. And then she sat down and got comfortable. 
So, um, <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Ruined my whole joke. I was expecting you to run out and then I just had an arm I couldn't use. Late afternoon, early evening, Sarah here. Um, I am getting ready to go and see my best friend for our weekly crafting session. Um, and because of COVID and trying to be nice and safe, we are in fact meeting outside. Um, so I've chucked over, because it is the middle of winter here, uh, I've chucked over this really big poncho y thing. It was just going to be a poncho. Um, it's got some little leafy details, which I think are very difficult for it to show up. <laughs> um, but kind of a cable leaf pattern. I'm going to get really close, you can see it like that. And that goes over these um, sleeve sections. The sleeves are open at the bottom, so it actually goes really nicely over the bell sleeves of the of the dress. Um, it was just going to be a, like a poncho front, uh, but then I quite decided I liked the idea of it being a bit more of a cape, so that's what it became. And it's got a hood, so it is extra kind of big and snuggly. I think it goes quite well with the overall aesthetic. Um, and the clasp is very pretty. I added a button as well because I just needed it to be a little bit stronger than the original clasp. Um, but this is from Historical Haberdasheries, who are very nice. Uh, I met them at a steampunk event over the summer. Also going to be adding this scarf, which, as I mentioned briefly earlier, I didn't make. Uh, my best friend made it. But I bought her the yarn and I've made similar things, so I, <laughs> I think that one can count. Um, I think this is the only item that I haven't actually made that she's made, so I figure for one cheat item it, it's fine. Uh, also going to be chucking on a couple of other bits, so I'll be putting on this hat with ear flaps, um, which is kind of a little bit gets in the way when one is driving. It's soft enough, um, so it's not the worst, but I want to put my mask on before I put this on, and this one I definitely can't drive in because um, I think it'll just take out far too much of my peripheral vision, but nicely it does go over my glasses. So um, I'll do another quick little uh, vibe when I'm there, so you can kind of see the full outfit. And I'm also going to be chucking this coat over the top, which I didn't make, um, so... But I need it because it's cold, <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna suffer unnecessarily, I haven't made any coats, so I can't substitute in one of those. And the piece de resistance is that this skirt being very big, I could just move, I can move the camera, I don't need to move my legs. This skirt being very long means it hides the leggings, which I am wearing, which I knitted. So they are nice, warm, thermal, knitted leggings. You can see the pants that I made that I flashed earlier, but showing with a nice cable down the side. They make amazing thermals, and they can lovely under jeans or under other clothing. So hopefully that'll keep my legs nice and warm, scarf and big coat, big jumper keeping me nice and warm and then the coat over the top just to kind of keep any sort of wind chill out. So uh, this is the full look with the mask. Outdoor crafting session and we've got a couple more Sarah inventions over here. So I've got these mittens so we could sit outside without our hands getting cold and, uh, and we also have they're de-sporting the, the matching set. Okay, so I am sand coat that I've just been into Tesco's. And I wanted to do a little update because I um, found a bag last night and I managed to get the project out of it. So I, uh, this is a mixture of knitting and crochet for a project basket. And I thought since I made it, I'd use it as a shopping basket. Uh, I liberated the project out of it by finishing it last night. Uh, it only needed a little bit of work, so it was easy enough to do. Um, got a few <laughs> looks. Um, got quite got a lot because obviously this is a weird look, and like I'm in a weird dress with a corset, and uh, it's it's the whole outfit is pretty weird, but especially the beak mask. Um, probably less weird this year than if I'd worn it last year, any time other than Halloween. But fair. Um, yeah, I just wanted to like reflect on that. They like, I think a couple of people gave me like weird looks or like what what's going on. Um, but so many more people than you might think didn't care. Um, and I think that that's something that's something to keep in mind. I was a little nervous that the uh, the checkout lady was gonna say something because I've I've had that before and it's never nice to be like criticised in public. But. Um, she wasn't, she was very polite and that was nice. Um, I tried to smile at someone and obviously they had no indication, so far from being my usual normal smiley self, uh, I had to, you know, be this person hidden behind a beak. But I saw someone that also like, stood my way out was in a like full hazmat suit, 
with like a big visor thingy with the the round bit on the edge um it looked kind of like modern uh like it was maybe from b&q that type of thing and he gave me like a really big thumbs up and i like gave him a nod and that was really nice and actually because that happened when i was just on my way out the door when i walked past some people that were like staff in high vis jackets that were like doing the trolleys or whatever when i walked past them outside and they laughed it was like oh they're laughing with me Whereas I think if I'd been a bit nervous and had just had like a bad interaction, that would have been like, oh, they're laughing at me and oh, what assholes. So if you are a person that likes to be weird and dress weird and maybe dress in things that you're not sure about because you made them yourself and you love them, but you're a little worried about how people are going to perceive you. Um, as well as considering that you're going to really enjoy wearing the things that you're going to wear and maybe you're going to have that negative it does happen and it is always shit when it does like know that the other weirdos that are around you that are also feeling self-conscious you can actually be like a really nice person for them so if you're dressed in some sort of super weird goth outfit but it's something that you absolutely love or some weird 18th century ball gown that you've made yourself or a medieval dress with bell sleeves with a poncho and a giant beak mask if you bump into someone else that's wearing something weird you can you can be the kind of inspiration for that person and you can like you can share because your insecurities don't necessarily show on your face especially when it's covered um but like the other person be like oh i see that person and they're really confident and they're wearing what they want to wear and maybe i can be like that as well so uh, thank you, anonymous man in the hazmat suit and gas mask who gave me the thumbs up today. And, um, yeah, be the be the weird that you want to see in the world and inspire the weird in other people. Um, and I think you probably do that if you go out dressing in an unusual way and you don't realise it um, because no one else will tell you uh, that you've really inspired them. And I don't think we tell people that enough, so... My mission for you today is if someone has inspired you to be weird or go out on a limb or do something that makes you happy that you're insecure about, tell them because I've had people tell me and it's been amazing and anytime I've told anyone that they've gone, I had no idea, thank you so much for telling me and they've been so happy about it. So um, be the weird that you want to see in the world, inspire the weird in other people and if somebody has inspired you, tell them. Good morning, day two. Um, I just wanted to show off, I think I've captured some footage earlier of my dress and um, the sports bra and stuff. Um, but this is just the rest of the outfit. This is the super big, so warm, cuddly scarf, which uh, I knitted. It took like more than a year, but I absolutely love it. It's got big angel wings on it and it's double knit, so it's inverted. Um, I realised that I didn't necessarily show you my mask. I think I'd I spoke about it last night, I think. Um, but there's an extra little feature in this dress because I've made it this year in uh, in our times of plague. Uh, or I put some little loops in it so I can then pull them up. 
and uh, have them cover my mask and have it have it match my dress. Uh, that one popped off. It's still kind of morningy, so I've been up for a few hours now, but I'm still kind of tired <laughs> and stupid. Um, I realise what I haven't shown. This is nice because it keeps my ears warm as well if I pull the hood up. But uh, it works if I pull it back as well. But now I've got the scarf on, I kind of want to keep the hood up. Uh, what I didn't show was my little bag. So when I'm at work, I have to carry quite a lot of stuff around with me, like lunch, books, and um, I have to carry my own like audio recorder and things for, for client work. And it's just a whole load of paperwork and things. Uh, so I put all my little valuables in a little bag, which I crocheted. And it matches my socks. Try and squeeze it in out. And it's that same yarn. It's that cotton. So yeah, uh, there'll be no more footage now until uh, this evening. And we're not going to film at work because of the uh, possibility of breaching patient confidentiality. So off into the hospital for the day of therapy. And then uh, I will be possibly back in this evening. I can't imagine I'm going to do anything more exciting than walking the dog, so <laughs> I might see you this evening with tomorrow's outfit and nothing else. <laughs> Bye. Welcome to day three of the challenge. A day when I didn't have to see anybody, so I thought I'm just going to be a woodland nymph. So I'm showing you my outfit from my little woodland retreat, i.e. the bottom of my garden. <laughs> so I thought I didn't have to see anybody today but I did have a therapy session but my therapist said I look very nice so <laughs> there's that so it's uh, frilly 1890s reproduction Victorian underwear as inspired by Bernadette Banner um, a corset from I want to say Andrea but it's not quite that's not quite her name Black um, who makes free corset patterns um, so this is Sonia, the first corset I ever made, and it came out looking so cool. Um, a pair of tights, which I did not make. The easy slipper pattern, um, the ones I knitted that you in lockdown. And the first shrug that I made, which inspired later shrugs, which is the Dragon Rider shawl from the book of Geek Knits, which I got given by a lady in the local knitting group. And it's got this cable that goes the whole way around the back. So that's cute, like that. Hopefully it's not too dark to see. Um, I'm just going to whack the corset off as I need to every time I pee, so it's good that it's not too um, difficult to undo or anything. Uh, to show off some of the inset lace, uh, hook gets caught on your shrug. Just wanted to show you the. Um, <laughs> eaten by the bushes. So they just show you the uh, inset lace. So there's this additional um, sort of two pieces of lace that uh, splice into the, the bodice. So there's this piece here which is the, under the bust uh, and that's the lace that matches the, the g-string and then there's also this piece that kind of goes over the hip and that goes all the way around as opposed to these ones which kind of stop here at the inset. So that is my outfit for the day. I'll be wearing the corset all day. It's comfortable. Um, it's a really nice shape as well. I really like how it just lifts the uh, the quite shapeless and baggy um, sort of underwear. It's upside down. <laughs> Fairly downside. But uh, yeah, I tend to find the underbust corsets more comfortable than the overbust corsets. Um, I think as well because I. I don't have to deal with trying to fit my rather smaller bust in it. Uh, so yeah, and it is just starting to rain, so I'm going to go back inside and do crafting and reading and various little bits of homework for the rest of the day. Catch you later! face. <laughs> um, it is totally normal shirt and trouser.
combination with these funky socks I made. What? So that's the pants that I mentioned and the sports bra, which is like much more cut out the black and strappy and stuff. But yeah, fleece lined onesie. For what? Just zip yourself in and you're dressed for work. Yay! And it's super warm inside me because it's all night in the police, so I think I might grab one of my scarves or something for going into work, but I don't think I need a coat. So I've gone with no scarf and no coat. I completely forgot to mention I'm wearing another homemade mask. So this one's got um, a background of one of the hospital masks. We have to change ours every day, sort of at both trusts. So we kept hold of uh, one of the old ones and just gave it a little fabric covering so i'll have to change it when i get in because of hospital policies and stuff but um yeah this one actually matches the corset that i made on monday and is much bigger and bulkier and more bane like than i was expecting when i initially made it so um yeah it's less the sleek number that i was hoping for and a bit more of a, a giant bulky mess but it works in its face so <laughs> it's fine so my day has ended and just taken Adler for, for a walk with my dog um, and I didn't put on any extra layers over this so nice and super duper toasty but I realised when I went into work that I've got an additional thing that I've made which isn't clothing but just went out some of the utility sort of homewares and it is these guys <laughs> talking to the dog um, and I've got some loose leaf tea in here uh, and so I just stitch these and then I fill them with the loose leaf tea and take it in and it's just a nice way to not have to carry a strainer so I'm just emptying these and giving them a rinse and then I'll just be chilling out for the rest of the evening surprise bonus outfit so uh, I was sat around in the onesie I was wearing today the like shirt and trousers and uh, it was just being a little bit uncomfortable to slouch in. Um, one of the downsides of it being a onesie is that you like sit on it and then like if you pull at this part because you're like slouching it kind of pulls this bit and it was just being a little bit tight and restrictive which is fine when you're at work which is what it was designed for and you're like sat kind of vaguely upright and stuff so you're not like super mega slouching but I was just trying to like slouch and do some crafting and stuff. Um, and it, it was not working for me so I thought because I've planned out the rest of my outfits for the week I've got like an inkling of what I'm gonna wear when um I thought these two items weren't gonna get away otherwise so bonus uh evening <laughs> section I'm not going out any night this week so um yeah but this is a this is a dress I made in lockdown with a little capelet that I made in like 2014 because I made it for like the first office job I had um, because I thought, oh, I can have it on the back of my, I'll have it on the back of my, uh, chair, and then if I get cold, it'll be like that big scarf that women and officers always have. Um, so that's, that's what that is. But, uh, this is a little dress I made inspired by Cool Work Riz Infinity Romper, so it was based on her instructions. And what she did, I'm gonna have to do this all carefully because otherwise both of my boobs will come out, because it's like backless and stuff. So, it is just these two really long bits of fabric. Um, this is an upcycle from some LARPing gear. Um, so they're just two really long bits of fabric that come up from the from the waistband um, at the front. Uh, it's like a waistband around the middle and that goes all the way around and then the skirt is attached to it and it's gathered at the back so there's like butt space. Um, and then you can just tie it and it's one of those like you can tie it however you want. I usually do some form of cross back and then um, tie it around. You can have a little cap sleeve if you want. I generally do not want. Um, but yeah, I made this in the summer and it was quite a cute little day summer dress. Um, I guess I could put a safety pin on that to enhance that. I usually just go for something like this. You can wear it a million ways and always wear it the same way. Uh, yeah. And then this little, um, and this is actually made of mohair. Um, and it was a variegated yarn I got a while ago, so this is a crocheted one. I can't remember what pattern I used. Um, but I did just notice I never put a um, button or any kind of closure on it. It's just a 
sit there one. And I feel like if I'd done that, it would have made it more wearable for me because then I could wear it and, and move around. So that might be something that I update with it because I haven't worn it very much. It did sit on the back of that office chair and it still didn't get worn very much. Um, also, it sheds like anything. So all over this black clothing and the black clothing that I often wear. Um, yes. Good morning. So Friday morning. Have my day of classes and I shall be wearing this little number. Uh, the blouse underneath worked. I wasn't sure it would, but um, yeah, I think it kind of looks fine with the, with the cravat. It's not the ideal. I would like something with the colour so I could hide the back and edges and things, but it's fine. And uh, the shoulders are quite wide. I left them quite wide on this when I took the sleeves off um, and didn't try and bring them in. So I actually got a little cap sleeve, which the waistcoat just enhances. The sports bra is what I expected it to be, which is nips and a bit sort of for coverage. So it's like if one's nips are here, it kind of comes to here. So it's not great for any extended movements because you would be popping out, which is a shame because that's what I made it for. Um, but it covers fine enough under clothes and considering all I'm planning on doing today is being in class and then maybe taking the dog for a walk. Um, Jacket to I mean I can see every floor in this outfit but it did I think it has worked my uh, quirky I don't know really whether doing the jacket up because I'm gonna be sat all day so uh, on the feet I've run out of socks so, yeah, new. so I'm going to wear slippers because I'm not going out and while these are like purchased slippers, I didn't make these. Um, I did this year because I've been wearing them so much. Have a go at relining them. So that's not the original lining that was in there. I got some polar fleece that I had left over um, and sort of pieced little bits together and cut out some little shapes and so I've got some relined ones. So. We are getting to the realm of, I modified a little bit, <laughs> um, as opposed to things that I completely made from scratch, but I figured since the alternative was just something I bought that I had, had that had like no hand in making or modifying, that was the way to go. So, uh, slippers that I lined, a shirt that I cut the collar off and tailored a little bit, <laughs> some pants that I added some lace to. And a bra that I made completely from scratch, and a suit that I made completely from scratch, so, uh, yeah, not a bad outfit. Uh... Bonus content. About to take the dog for a walk, and she is wearing a coat that I made her. So, a little high vis and it's fleece lined, and it's got a bike light in it. <laughs> She's very sleepy. Hey everyone, so this is Saturday's outfit on my, uh, I'm here for the cult meeting. So, uh, as a point of personal pride. I've decided to not use my cheap bra and just go braless and actually I put it on and it looks fine so um, I reckon that's going to be alright. So I've got my pentagram long sleeve top kind of based off the Annika Victoria pattern um, and then modified for this there's a one called like starstruck or something like that so I just kind of copied the idea but I didn't um, copy the pattern. And the circle skirt uh, with the with the pentagram on it and it's on an elasticated waist. Uh, I messed up a little bit when doing the measurements, or they weren't very clear. So this is uh, scandalously short to the point I'm not going to turn around. <laughs> so as a point of personal pride, I'm going to try and not use my cheat item of leggings um, today. I, I spent the whole morning naked because I was dyeing my hair, so I figure I can hang out with like my legs out and kind of my butt out a little bit for just being in my house, that's probably fine. If I go out, I'll probably pop them on. And then I've got the little shorts wearing as knickers, which uh, work fine. They're a little bit tight. I've got a little bit bigger in lockdown from a lack of exercise, um, but that appears to be fine. Um, they were okay. They're okay when they're on, but like pulling them on was a bit of a <laughs> action. So I'll show you as well the hoodie situation. Is this insane? So um, I can turn around now. So that's the kind of long back on it and the short front. The 
these are the pockets they're quite poorly done and because the fabric's quite thin I can't really put too much in them but there's like quite a lot of space in them and then this is the cowl neck which I think looks really nice as a cowl neck and sort of okay as a hood like it's not ideal I've been trying to do this sort of cowl hood thing for a while and I tried it with the grey dress and it was a bit better and I've tried it with this and it like was this was my first attempt um, and it's like okay it sort of works and if you do a little bit of a setback situation then it's not so bad but um yeah it looks quite cute as a cow neck I think and it's gothy and velvety and then because I've washed my hair I'm probably going to just take it down and pop a towel over my shoulder so it can dry properly rather than like not super curly or like the middle of the bun wouldn't dry if I left it like this all day uh, so I'll probably have a towel over my shoulders I'll probably whack this off because I'm really warm having just come out of the shower um, but when my hair is a little bit just damp in order to use this thing which I made which I think I haven't worn yet um, I will be uh, I will be ready for my cult in a in a different way <laughs> so this is just a little hooded cowl thing it comes down quite far an idea of size but one wouldn't wear it stretched um, and I think this might be quite a nice way to keep my head warm with my slightly damp hair in these wintry times especially when we hit the evening the face hole is a bit tight so <laughs> it just sort of sits down like a cowl around your neck should you want to because two cowls is apparently the look I'm going for today um, and also should I need to go out I'll be able to add to my cult look by despite having carrying it, carried it a lot um, my hand satanizer pouch I have not actually used this week so it's still on the shelf so I can take my uh, satanic hand hand sanitizer with a pentagram on it um, as the inverted cross and then the, the squiggly satanic cross as well so uh, I am I am ready for the cult meeting and I've got my satanizer with me <laughs> okay last day's outfit so I've got the last sports bra which is the biggest so I thought that'd be best for exercise so I could move around without actually having a nip slip. I've got the pole shorts which are doubling up as pants and these are the upcycle from a pair of boxers. Uh, I've got the leg warmers which are just a pair of socks that I cut the feet off. I've also got these harnesses which I made from scratch um, so I've completely forgotten about them um, and I think I saw online somewhere how to make them and so I made them they're literally just bits of elastic with some key rings in them. So I've got like a chest one which is like an open boob bra and a like thigh decorator thingy. It's a very like quirky fashion trend from a few years ago thing plus a bit of a pole dancer thing so you kind of enhance your outfit in weird ways because you need to have lots of skin available to like grip the pole. It's not the case for Acro but I thought may as well. And we've got this skirt to go over top. So that's what that looks like on. And obviously it's got that slight nudity issue. But not really an issue for me today. Nice fit jumper which I really, really like. jacket which was a mock-up that worked a bit better than expected but it's a bit tight so not an issue so I think I'm gonna leave it open but it does do up and it looks like nice enough done up and then I'm gonna top the whole look off the hat. So this is my last outfit. It's got a little bit of a hodgepodge situation going on. I don't think I'd ever put this together but uh, it's pretty much what I've got left. <laughs> Hello! We have made it to the end of the week so this is my final wrap up just to talk about how it's been and what we've learned. So uh, Annika did this for the stated reasons of wanting to know what her wardrobe was missing and also trying to understand a bit more what she wanted to wear. I actually really like 
having a massive wardrobe. Um, so the pieces that I'm missing isn't something that I was quite as as worried about. I think it's maybe highlighted some of the things I haven't made as much. So if I wanted to increase my skills as a sewer, then I can kind of see where the gaps are, particularly things like trousers. Um, and I've made a lot less tops than I felt like I would have made. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really feel the need to only wear clothes that I've made myself. I really like just having loads of clothes and making things that don't exist or are really expensive. The other thing as well is that this was not a representative week of my normal life. It's 2020, we're in the middle of a pandemic, a lockdown. Normally I'd be going out to gigs and I'd be going to see people and I'd need to be wearing clothes that were appropriate to leave the house many more days. So uh, I don't think I could have done this challenge in 2019 or even 2020 if we hadn't been inside all week and, and all of the lockdown was ending, I was doing my kind of normal life stuff because I need things that are really practical and things that are much more versatile and things with massive pockets all over them, which some of the clothes do, some of them don't. But where you don't have a safe place to keep your handbag, having a big pocket in the workplace and a pair of black jeans that you can then also wear to a gig because you don't have a safe place in a mosh pit to put your gig, to put your handbag down and you have to pay for a cloakroom if you want that. So yeah, I haven't learnt those things. But what I have learnt is how many clothes that you wear normally because <laughs> um, normally when I'm not as conscious of it I'll rewear clothes so I'll wear the same bra for three or four days I'll wear the same pair of jeans for a week and maybe wear two or three t-shirts and and that'll be like a whole week's worth of clothing plus some socks and underwear but like when we've been at home and things as well it's I've not been going out and sweating or getting muddy or anything I wear the same pair of socks for a couple of days it's not it, it's not as like much so I suppose from like a ethical and fashion like conscious point of view from that way it's important to maybe think about how much effort goes into making an outfit and how many little pieces there are from both like a labour point of view but also from a design point of view so I, I guess I've got a bit of an appreciation for that um, and like I had this whole Thing covered in clothes at the start of it and I've got like three or four things left and I was not expecting that so with the exception of Thursday where I changed my outfit I just I only have a week's worth of clothes that I've made myself which I still think is quite impressive but also was not what I expected um, I think I did really well I only used a couple of cheat items so I wore a pair of tights one day and I wore a pair of leggings one day but I didn't wear my cheat bra uh, I didn't wear any cheat socks and I managed to not wear any cheat pants either so uh, I'm quite impressed with myself for that. It did, it has involved a couple of days of being barefoot so I don't know that I've really overcome it um, through some creativity but but I have. Uh, I've managed it anyway despite a small amount of discomfort and sitting with a blanket on my feet. So I thought I'd show some of the items which I'd pulled out which I wasn't able to, to wear uh, just because then it satisfies me to do so. So this is one of the masks I made, it's a bit intense, um, and it's lined with a t-shirt, it's a crochet mask like the red one that I made, and it's got aluminium tin cans on it. Uh, I have these satin bloomers, which I made, which go really nice, I wore them with the blue corset that I had from Monday, so that's an option. I've got this shrug which is made of sari silk. Uh, yarn which my friend gave me because she'd never used it for anything so I made this it's kind of two-tone pink and green because I intended it not because I ran out of yarn, I ran out of yarn. Um, and it's quite nice because when you wear it it kind of comes down to like bicep -y length so when you wear it like this then it looks like it's pink completely because the green bit's quite hidden so from the front so you just kind of get that pink down the sides and then you can also wear it the other way up and then it looks purely green because it's a half and half so quite nice didn't get to wear it if i'd worn another like sleeveless dress then it would have gone with it uh, a couple of pairs of shorts so this is a significant upcycle i bought a pair of leather trousers ages and ages and ages ago and i wanted some leather hot pants so i cut them into shorts like pulled the waistband down, pulled the crotch bit up, cut them far too short because that's what you always do and added a little button and 
bit of flappy situation there. I actually made these when I was 17 and I found them in a bag uh, in the cupboard and I put them on like last year and they fit better than I did when I was 17 because then I wasn't doing that much exercise and now I've been doing loads of like workouts and stuff so it fits like a muscular butt and a flat stomach a little bit better than sort of what I had before which was skinnier but also less muscular so that was exciting. Uh, these which are upcycled, I think this is also Annika Victoria inspired, the like lace and with uh, the garters attached to them. I didn't attach the garters but uh, so these are just a pair of sport shorts and then I brought them in up the, around the sides and up the top because they weren't very fitted so now they are very fitted and then also added the lace to them so that's an upcycle. These shorts I made from scratch for Rocky Horror Picture Show, <laughs> can be Columbia, so they are sparkly, looks great on camera. Um, they are just a top, I think, of a dress that I added the stripes to and then like sewed in the middle to make it look a little crotch bit, so the back is just stretchy. Um, so yeah, I think this was an empire line and I just turned it up the other way and pulled it down a little bit. So there are those, I didn't find any practical use for shorts. I think also because I was doing this in the winter, so uh, I probably would have worn a lot less clothing if I was doing this in the middle of the summer. This cow scarf, which I don't really like, um, I tried, I knitted it on uh, Sharpies while wearing gloves, wearing plastic gloves, in the hopes that it would make some cool look, but uh, it did not. It just kind of looks white and stained, um, so yep. And then this other thing which also didn't work super well, which is a big felty mohair like shoulder wrap thingy. Uh, I wore it the other week and it was it was fine and it looks okay, but it just it doesn't look like the thing that I wanted it to look like, which I was trying to copy online. The gradients didn't smooth out, so it just looks blocky, which is what it is. And that's it. And also that's not it. So one of the things that I realised is because I've been making clothes for so long, I forget what I've made. So there are a couple more costumey pieces which I purposefully didn't pull out because I was like, I don't think there's going to be a point where I want like a tie on peacock skirt or a thigh holster that'll hold a thermos and some tea bags. Um, even just like looking down when I was setting the camera up, I noticed in one of the performing boxes I've got this little leather choker that I made. I found some jewellery that I made last week and considered adding that as part of it. Um, but yeah, I just. I've realised how much stuff that I've made and how much I forget that I've made. So that's been quite a nice little lesson to take away. Um, also one of the things that's been really, really nice is if I've taken off something and it's not dirty enough to need to go anywhere other than kind of in a cupboard, I've been able to just put things back where they were before the challenge. So the big scarf is the first time I noticed it, that big um, triangle wing scarf. I wear it all the time. And it's nice to know that it's not just a wardrobe that I have that's my own clothes. They're just kind of integrated into my life. And that's a really nice thing, I think, because it really shows that they are wearable and usable and that, you know, the time I spent making them was, was worth it because I'm now getting the benefit from that. So like, yeah, as I took things off or out of pockets and that sort of thing, they, they went back to where they were before the, the mask went back to the little space on the mantelpiece where I'm keeping that, the, the scarf went back onto the shelf and, and things. So I think there's something really nice about that, which I hadn't realized. So Good job me, and good job past me, and yeah, good luck to anybody in the future that, that wants to do stuff. Um, one of the other things that I kind of learned this week was there were a couple of days where I felt quite self-conscious about going out in something, and I mentioned it on Monday for having been in Tesco's, but I actually was totally fine, so yeah, people care a lot less than you think. And there were times where I was like, oh, I'm wearing something really awkward. And people pointed it out. But they pointed it out to say how much they liked it. I'm like, oh, that dress you're wearing is amazing. Or, oh, I love that top. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm doing a challenge this week where I wear clothes that I've only made myself. And people like, oh, that's so cool. So it's not just this is a quirky thing and I'm humouring you or anything. But, yeah. Um, 
wear, wear stuff that you've made and wear stuff that makes you happy and wear stuff that you feel a bit self-conscious about like silly hats if you <laughs> if you think that that's going to be something that you want to do um one of the really nice things I did was I did my roots this week because I realised there is nowhere in my life that minds that I have blue hair and a face full of piercings despite that not being the case in the past so that's been really nice and that's moving through professional circ circuits as a young professional and it's not just well I'm at uni so that's whatever it's um working in the NHS and I'm working into hospital trusts and I'm seeing patients and patient facing and I'm yeah no one gives a crap <laughs> which is great so I've been into uh, uh, committee meetings with the professional society that I'm, I'm part of and no one cares and I've led on them and that's been the case for a couple of years and no one's ever cared and yeah that's something really nice to take away that maybe I'm changing and maybe the whole world's changing to become a little bit more inclusive, that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm sure this video is uh, hideously edited and 17 hours long by now, so I'm going to stop talking. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed coming and seeing this journey um, and uh, eating my own beautifully new blue dyed hair. Good luck in your own challenges and thank you to Annika Victoria for not only creating this idea and creating a video and paving the way but also for all of the lovely tutorials that I followed of yours and for that tiny little encouraging comment that you put when I posted on your video a couple of weeks ago so thanks for that. Okay good luck and happy crafting!